So for some reason, um, as far as mounts go on cameras uh, and the fans of those cameras, you know, it gets it gets to be a little bit of a touchy subject I've come to see. For whatever reason, I'm not quite sure, but especially when you start to get adapters and use certain lenses on a different body, um, people can get defensive and kind of uh, go on tangents on why that's the worst thing to do. In my experience, it's not bad at all, at least for your more recreational stuff. Uh, professionally, we'll get into that a little bit later, but for now, I wanted to make a video specifically about that topic because there's one lens that I still use of, from Canon that I think is honestly one of the best lenses I've ever used. I started my journey on Canon and I eventually switched to Sony down the road, but there's one lens, this one specifically, it is the, uh, the 100 millimeter F2.8 macro lens, uh, the first rendition. I think, I only think there was one version. I think they have an RF version now for their RF mount, but this is the EF mount version. And uh, this honestly is one of the best lenses that I've ever used. The optical quality and just the function of it overall is just amazing. So naturally when I, and this is not a cheap lens. So when I switched over to Sony, I could either get Sony's macro lens, which if I'm being honest, I wasn't as impressed as far as the uh, clarity goes, um, or I could get this guy. This is the Sigma MC11 adapter. And what it allows you to do is to take your Canon EF lenses and throw it onto your Sony E-mount cameras. If I remember right, this thing ran me about 250 bucks. Now the question is, does this work? Does it do the job? And yes, it mounts it to my camera to where I can actually use the, the lens. Now there's a lot of details in there that I need to address as far as autofocus goes. Anytime you're messing with these adapters, um, autofocus isn't going to work perfectly. The biggest reason I needed this was just to be able to mount it to my Sony to be able to use it. With a macro lens, most of the time you're working with manual focus. So it didn't really affect me as far as like autofocus goes. That being said, autofocus still works. It works maybe like 50% of the time though. So when you're working with these adapters, and I'm sure there's others out there, I haven't really explored it more. Um, the, the main reason why I needed this was just to attach it to my camera, which it does. Uh, as far as autofocus goes, doesn't work the best. So that's why when working with topics like this, don't let someone's opinion just kind of be the end all be all. It's going to come down to the individual need. So for me, this works perfectly to at least mount the thing to my camera and to be able to still use it. I, I use this macro lens all the time still for macro stuff. So anyways, that's a whole spiel. I didn't really plan on doing that at the start of this video, but I wanted to just kind of address that and get that out of the way. The whole reason we're doing this video is to do some macro photography. My only macro lens being that Canon. So if you're a Canon fanboy, Sony fanboy, whatever, crucify me all you want. I'm still using the lens and I'm still getting pictures with it and that's all I really care about. So this is the kit for the day. Sony a7 III, Sigma MC11 adapter and the Canon f2.8 macro uh, EF lens. This, like I said, this lens is amazing and I still love it. And this setup actually works quite well. This was actually gonna be a completely different video, but I had the unfortunate experience of having one of my Amazon packages swiped off my doorstep. So that video is being pushed to next week, but hopefully I can resolve all that and uh, get replacements and hopefully no one takes stuff off my doorstep again. Please don't do that. If, if you're a decent human being, just don't do that. Got a fun location for this video though. Um, so it's just an old barn with a bunch of tools, hay equipment, like all sorts of things in there. Perfect for macro photography. So um, we're gonna get in there. We're gonna explore with, uh, explore some comps, explore some angles, and um, that's gonna be the video. It's gonna be fun. I haven't gone out and just shot with the macro lens for a while. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Got a few stops to make before I can get to the shooting location. So we're gonna do that. Um, but for now, let's pack up, get on the road, and I'll see you guys in a few. All right, here we are at location. So like I said, this is a really old barn just filled with a lot of different like chains, tools, um, all sorts of like equipment. For macro photography, I love this environment because with macro photography, you are kind of delving into a whole nother world, um, a world that our eyes don't really see at all. And so it just kind of makes you a little bit more aware of specific smaller details. And that's why I love macro photography. I don't do it as much as I should by any means. And that's why I'm doing this video today. But there's all sorts of different areas, compositions that you can explore because compositions can be um, like, you know, this big. It's just a very small spot that, you know, you might, that might catch your eye and then you can just pull out some immense details. So 
it's a lot of fun. Macro photography, I enjoy it quite a bit. I'm going to enjoy it today. Um, hopefully, I don't know how, oh wow. There's a pigeon up there. I don't really know how I'm going to film this video. Probably just leave the camera on the uh, tripod and then walk you guys through the, the comps that I find. But yeah, let's get started and see what we can find to start us off. Okay, so this is kind of just a good example of how small these compositions can be and how just random they are as, as far as the macro photography goes. Um, the first thing that kind of attracted my eye was this little red button on this air compressor uh, against like the rest of the metal there. I mean, it, it was literally nothing, it's just a button, but will it look cool through a macro lens? Probably, I don't know. So we're gonna start here. Uh, I'm gonna do the first few angles, um, kind, of, kind of coming at it uh, this way and shooting it this way. And then I might step over here because this is actually kind of a cool angle tool, uh, <clears throat> angle as well. So um, I don't know, we'll mess around with it. I'll change the angle of that camera when I'm capturing it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm rocking, um, Kind of like I said earlier, the autofocus doesn't work that well, but so it, it can actually, it can autofocus um, fairly well if it's like a normal range, but when you want to kind of activate the macro um, aspect of the lens and get really close, that's when the autofocus doesn't really work. So most of the time when you're actually trying to utilize the macro capabilities of the lens, you have to switch it to manual focus using this adapter, but it still does a, a decent job. So I'm gonna switch to manual focus here. We're gonna get right up on it as close as it'll go. Um, maybe a little step back. Uh, yeah, we'll step back a little bit and I'll just get kind of it in the lower left side of the shot and see what that looks like. Not bad. Um, I do like the I like the little uh, bolt on the top there, just above it. We'll go uh, we'll go horizontal here, kind of the same framing. We'll go f four. I like the, uh, I think I like the vertical framing a little bit better on this one, um, but not bad. I'm gonna switch to this other side here, kind of shooting towards the light a little bit. Mm. See that, that I like a lot more. Um, I like kind of the the thing in the foreground as well. Uh, and it, you know, the focus is farther in uh, in the photo adds that depth to it quite a bit. Uh, I like that, I like that a lot. Let's get a little bit closer. This one, I tried to make the, uh, the words more in focus, but um, it's such a, shallow angle that I didn't get enough of the enough of the button. So let's try that again. Let's get more of the button. That's better. Ah, see, I like that. I don't know why. That's just kind of a cool composition to me. <laughs> Uh, these compositions are going to be not your typical compositions, but you know, that is cool. Uh, I feel like there's going to be a really, that's going to be a really fun edit once I get into the program. Found the, uh, the second composition here. It's going to be this little, um, chain and hook right here, uh, specifically the orange part of it. So, um, multiple angles, I might do like a, a full like 360 because the light's coming in from this side, big old doors. Um, I'll do angles shooting this way away from the light and shooting towards the light too. So um, I think I'll start with away from the light for now, kind of back into the barn. And yeah, we'll see where that leads. Bump the ISO a little bit up. This is kind of in the barn. It's back in towards the barn, but also kind of like towards the front still, but not turn to the light, but we will see what this looks like. 
not bad. I think I'd like it if the chain's more in focus. So I might try to rock the focus a little bit more to the center there. But uh, really cool comp still. Oh yeah, see that's cool. I stepped back a little bit and also turned more towards the front. Um, that's cool, I do like, uh, I wonder if I can get that um, cobweb in focus actually. Cause that's very macro level, having the, like, the cobweb in focus, but let's try it. Okay, so this is, this, not really a subject in this shot. Um, the cobweb is in focus and it's cool, but it's a little, eh, like it's still, there's not really a subject. Um, so see if I can maybe do it a little bit differently and help the look of it, but I don't know if there is a way that I can pull this off the way I want to. Okay. Oh, see backing up, backing up helped it a lot. Just having more of the hook in frame um, and the cobweb, yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot more. Okay, so I flipped it around. I'm gonna actually shoot into the back of the bar now because I was still kind of shooting towards the front. Um, but I'm gonna get kind of this, because there's a few more webs on this side that look, look kind of cool. And then there's also just like a more flat side of the, the hook. So uh, I'll see how, see how this turns out. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, already I can tell. Actually, I think I want to get a little bit more farther south here. And we'll try that. Yeah, see that's that's pretty cool. I could even I could even get it a little bit more in focus, so let me try that. Uh go 3.5, bring the aperture a little wider. We'll try that right there. Yeah, see that is cool. I don't know, that's just really cool because there's nothing else in frame other than the chains and then the hook. And then it's just depth um, for the rest of the photo. So that's, that's a cool shot. I actually like that a little bit better than the other angle. Again, that's gonna be really fun to edit. So excited to get all these in the editor. You guys will have already seen all these photos cause I'm just gonna throw them up as I, <laughs> as I shoot these. But um, yeah, another great, another great composition right there. Okay, really weird lighting right here. But uh, right here we've got some of these wrenches in the awesome light that's coming in. And also we have some of these uh, C-clamps right here that have a bunch of cobwebs on them. So this right here, uh, and even like right in here, this is gonna be just, chock full of all kinds of comps. So I'm gonna spend a little while here probably. Uh, so let's see what we can find. I'm gonna actually start with, oh wow, exposure is crazy on here. Uh, I'm gonna start with the uh, C-clamps here and see what I can get uh, coming at it from this angle here. So decrease the ISO quite a bit. Back up even more. And we'll try this right here. I want to get the whole thing in it. Right there. Yeah, see, that's awesome. All those cobwebs on there look, look really cool. I think I'm going to get a little bit closer in. Uh, I, I wanted to get the whole thing in the frame there, uh, but I'll move in a little bit closer just to get a little bit more detail on the, on the webs there. Let's see, I think I'll do, I think I'll get a shot of the web up here. I don't really know how I want to do this. Oh yeah, right there. Mm, see, that's cool. Um, it's just the web that's in focus and nothing else. And I think that's, that's cool. Uh, let me try coming at it from this angle here and see. <coughs> Yeah, see, not always does it work because my shadow is going to get in the way because the light is so harsh. Um, so I think I'll stick with this side, but we'll go horizontal on a few shots here. Mm, that's cool. See that little, there's that little like spot of web there that I think I'm going to, 
try to get a little bit more in focus. There you go. That looks pretty sharp. That's cool. Okay, let's move on to some of these uh, some of these wrenches down here. Same situation. I'm gonna want to shoot it from this angle because those shadows. Ah. Uh, let's see. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I might try and get the whole thing in focus if I can, if that's even possible. There we go, that's a little bit more even across the, the whole palette, that's cool. Um, let me try and get, uh, let me try to get this small one right here. There's a little tiny uh, cobweb that was flowing, so let's see if I was able to get that. Oh yeah, I ah, see that's cool. Awesome. It's not even really illuminating. Ah, see that's really cool though. It's not illuminating anything important though. It's just illuminating uh, the word craft, or at least the first few letters. It's not even the full word, but that is a really cool photo. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be illuminating anything fun. That's just, I don't know, I enjoy that. Okay, in one of these shelves, specifically this one right here, and I flip my screen around, hold on. This one right here, um, there's this little, um, it's actually the tip of a propeller uh, from a plane. So I'm going to try to just capture, not necessarily the whole shelf here, but more or less capture the idea of the whole shelf uh, kind of at this angle with the sun sort of shining on the on the tip there. So um, let's see if this even works Oh, yeah, uh, I do need to stop down a little bit actually It's too a little bright for my liking but that is the that is the composition that I wanted. Oh, see, that's cool. See, like I said, not necessarily the whole shelf, um, but it's kind of the idea of it. Um, and you get the you can't really tell that it's the tip of a propeller, but you also can. I don't know. It's just a fun photo in in total for me. Okay, so I'm in the back of the barn here, kind of in the corner with all this hay. I wanted to do. For my last composition, I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging. Not much light back here, not anything really inspiring. So, um, but I'm gonna see if I can get some just up close textures really of the hay uh, in a manner that at least looks kind of cool. Um, if not, it's, it is what it is, but we'll see. There's some mailing twine in here as well that maybe I can get into, uh, get into my composition as well and see what happens. But all right, uh, let's see what we can find. I think what I'm going to try to go for is the composition here of just an up close shot of this twine that's like, you know, it's really holding the, the hay and it's, you know, there's a nice seam there that showcases the twine. So I'm going to try to get something creative there. Um, like I said, this might not work, but I wanted to kind of challenge myself, come back to where the light's not the best and also it's hay. There's not much you can do with it. So, but let's see if we can find something interesting here. <clears throat> Okay, we really gotta bump the ISO up here. And let's see, let's find the twine, there it is, okay. So let's just go for it, let's just go straight up taking a shot of the twine. You know, that's actually kinda cooler than I thought. Uh, there's not much to look at, but it's still kinda cool, okay. Let's go with, um, there's kind of a cobweb here too. I don't think I can actually pick it up without taking a shot of the cobweb itself. Excuse me, but I'm gonna see if I can get a more horizontal shot of the twine to get maybe 
more of the hay off to like the left. Uh, see, I don't like that as much as the vertical one. I don't know why that vertical one was kind of cool. I, I feel like the angle that I want, I need to be up here, and I really don't feel like getting on the hay and getting it all over myself. But you know, you have to do what you have to do to get to the shot, so... Okay, so we're here. Um, mind you, this is really old hay, and it's really dusty, and honestly, it's not the best, but okay, let's try this. That's kind of cool. Again, this is just more or less a, like a texture thing. Um, it's just the hay and then the twine and um, I don't know, the green against the, the hay color is, is, is fun. Not the coolest uh, composition in the world. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of cobwebs here though. I might be able to actually, you know, I see a cobweb down there that's kind of cool looking. So I might see if I can just get a shot of that as like my, my final comp here. Let me, uh, let me get down. <clears throat> yeah, it's this cobweb right here. So I'm going to see if I can get something. If it even picks it up. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we're working with something here. Let's try this. That's fun. I might be able to bring more detail out when I get it into an editor, but that's still fun. I don't really take a whole lot of shots of just cobwebs, so I think that's gonna wrap up all the comps that I capture, at least on video. Might take a few more pictures here, but I do need to pack it up and start heading home here before too long. But as you guys can see, there's really limitless possibilities when it comes to macro photography. Once you find one specific spot and one composition and one object to start taking photos of, uh, they all, other, other objects and other compositions just kind of start to jump out at you um, within the span of like a few inches from each other. So it, that's why macro photography is a lot of fun. Um, I encourage you guys, if you don't have a macro lens, by all means, go get yourself one. Or if you have an old lens that doesn't work on your new stuff, look into getting an adapter and maybe that'll work for you. In my car, officially on my way back, all wrapped up with that video. Point of this video, macro photography is a lot of fun. Second point, don't let the whole um, fanboy basis keep you from branching out and trying things like getting an adapter for your lens and using that because as you can see the lens worked perfectly fine on my channel specifically i want to push as many practices as i can that are going to just encourage you to create and kind of get away from the uh the weird niche like you know fanboy stuff uh, when it regards all these brands, you know, whether or not Sony's the best one, Canon's the best one, yada, yada. You know, I've gotten caught up in that myself. Uh, but when it comes down to it, whatever tool you've got, just use it to create something uh, rather than nothing because I see a lot of people talk out there about all the ins and the outs and the stats, um, but then I don't actually see anything that they've created. So it's like, try to back up your talk a little bit with some stuff uh, of your own. That's something that I found myself doing a lot and it's something I want to encourage as many people in the creative world um, to not do. It was definitely a fun video today, guys. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a like down below and also subscribe for future content. I've got another one frame episode coming out here pretty quick. Yeah, if you made it this far, appreciate you guys. Get out there and create something yourself. I'll see you all in the next video.